This call is being recorded. Welcome, welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition. I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E-Church in Harvest, Alabama. And as it has already been said and will say it again, this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I realize and recognize this is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. And I truly believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Glory, hallelujah, praise your holy name, Lord. We thank you and we praise you. We come to you now in praise, Lord. We come to you now in prayer. We ask you, dear Heavenly Father, that you just anoint afresh this day. Touch us as only you can. Commune with us. Be true to your word where two or three are gathered in your name. You said you would be in the midst. So, Lord, we just lift you up this day and we say thank you for being our God and being God all by yourself. Thank you, the Heavenly Father, for being our Lord, our Lord and our Savior, our Alpha and our Omega, our beginning and our end. We just love you because, first of all, you loved us. And because of the love you've shown for us by giving us your darling son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins and that you raised him from the dead, Lord, we, we have to say thank you, Lord. We have to say thank you. And because of that love you have shown us, we, we don't have any choice but to love you back. You're so good, Lord. We just say to you, we love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. Oh, how much we love you, God. Thank you for loving us. Now, Lord. As we get ready to, to go into this word today, we just ask you, the Heavenly Father, to open up our hearts and minds to your will and your way. Open up our ears that we might hear your word. Open up our mouths that we might speak your word. Open up everything, dear Lord, that we might receive your word, that we may not just be hearers of your word, but actual doers of your word. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Ooh, ooh. Hallelujah. It's hot down here in Harvest, Alabama. The sun is beaming in on the on on, on the room I'm in. I have a little um uh what they call it, a sunroom on my back porch and it faces the east and that sun is beaming in. It's a little warm in here today. So but it's gonna be all right. I, I don't know if it's the warmth of the sun. S-U-N or the warmth of the S-O-N. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our lesson today, our lesson today for this Sunday school is going to come from Zephaniah, Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. This lesson is a continuation from last week's lesson. Last week we talked about the day of the Lord. And, and then today we're going to talk about that day is coming. That day is coming. Hallelujah. And the subtitle for this is The Consequences of Disobedience. The Consequences of Disobedience. So we're going to spend a little time talking about that also. But let's begin reading Zephaniah, Zephaniah chapter 3, starting at verse 1 um, uh, down to verse 8. And this is out of the New King James Version of the Bible. Woe to her who is rebellious and polluted to the oppressing city. She has not obeyed his voice. She has not received correction. She has not trusted in the Lord. She has not drawn near to her God. Her princes in her midst are roaring lions. Her judges are even wolves that leave not a bone till morning. Her prophets are insolent, treacherous people. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. The Lord is righteous in, in her midst. He will do no unrighteousness. Every morning he brings his justice to light. He never fails, but the unjust know no shame. I have cut off nations. Their fortresses are devastated. I have made their streets desolate. 
with none passing by. Their cities are destroyed. There is no one, no inhabitant. I said, surely you will fear me. You will receive instruction so that her dwelling would not be cut off, despite everything for which I punished her. But there rose early and corrupt all their deeds. Therefore, wait for me, says the Lord, until the day I raise up from plunder. My determination is to gather the nations to my assembly of kingdoms, to pour out on them my indignation, all my fierce anger, all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Oh, have mercy. <laughs> have mercy on our souls. This lesson is a lesson about the Lord coming in and just whooping up a storm. We, we, we don't like to hear about God's wrath, but everybody wants to talk about, oh, God's wrath this and God's wrath that. But, but this text here shows that if God's wrath ever shows up, when God's wrath comes in, it's going to be some devastating things. And that day is coming. That day where his wrath is really going to show up. People are always saying, ooh, ooh, the Lord must be showing his wrath. He must be whooping me. No, you ain't seen his whooping yet. Because this text here talks about how deadly God can come in and how hard God can come in. I remember on last week I shared with you as I was studying for the previous lesson of, of Zephaniah how as I was studying, I was like, oh, God, this is such a hard lesson. This is such a hard, this is, this is truly that hell and damnation lesson. And, and, and as I was studying it, all of a sudden I looked up on my left side and there was a rainbow uh, out my window. And that rainbow basically started to my left and went all the way to my right and covered where I was sitting studying at that time. And that, that, that rainbow revealed to me that, that, that promise that, that God made to Noah, that he told Noah, Noah, you know, I, I, I'm making a promise. And, 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 and the rainbow is the sign of my promise that, that, that I won't destroy the earth ever again with water. But we also know that it says that next time it's going to be by fire. So, so, so there's going to come a time. Uh, where, where God is going to, to put desolation on this earth because of the evil that, that, that is so prominent in the earth, the evil that was prominent in, in Noah's time and even the evil that is, promised, that is prominent in our time in these last days. There's going to come a time where judgment will show up. Amen. And I just wanted to open up with that as an introduction, but, 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 at the same time I say all of that, we also have to realize that God has his mercy and he has his grace and his love is right there. So he's always going to warn us and, and, and encourage us and send prophets, priests, and kings to, to, to encourage us to repent and turn from my wicked ways and turn towards God. And so as we talk about this lesson, it's going to sound like doom and gloom, but there's always the fact that Jesus is standing there with open arms saying, I died for you. Standing there with open arms, I, I bled for you. Standing there with open arms, they nailed me to the cross. Standing there with open arms saying, please come unto me. All you that believe in me, I, I, I'm ready to save you. All you got to do is turn, repent. And come to me and confess me as your Lord and Savior. And all of this hell and damnation that will occur on earth and even after death, for those that didn't trust in me, you don't have to deal with. You are saved, sanctified, and set free. So so, so I, I just want to say that now, and then I'm going to say it a little later on because I like to end the message on the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. So our, our, our key verse for this lesson is Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8, where he says, Therefore wait ye upon me, 
says the Lord, until the day I rise up to the prey. In other words, he's saying, just watch and see. I'm coming. I'm going I'm to take care of all of this. I, I, I'm, I'm going to read the message Bible uh, of that same verse. This is what the message Bible says. It says, well, if that's what you want, stick around. God's decree, your day in court is coming. But remember, I'll be there to bring evidence. I'll bring all the nations to the courtroom, round up all the kingdoms, and let them feel the burnt, the burnt of my anger, my raging wrath. My zeal is a fire that will purge and purify the earth. Oh man, I when I when I saw that uh, feel the burnt, I burnt. I thought about old Bernie uh, Sanders say, "We got to we gonna feel the burn. Yeah, you gonna feel the burn if you don't get right with God." Oh hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, now, another thing about this text, this, this text is the, is the hard part. This is the hard part of chapter 3. When you go on and read further in chapter 3, you will see how God deals with the faithful remnant, the faithful remnant. He, he tells what he's going to do for those, and we're going to cover that in next week's lesson. I'm not going to try to go too deep in that this week because today I'm dealing with this wickedness. That, 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 that had permeated the, the, the city of Jerusalem, the holy place. It had permeated it. Jesus, God, I mean, God had made a sanctuary in that place, and yet evil polluted it. Evil got all in it and just started taking over, and that just made God mad. I, I think about it like this. I think about it like this. The temple of God was in Jerusalem. And God got upset because the people were so rebellious and disobedient. Well, we know in the New Testament we are told we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And if God lives inside of us, I'm talking about us Christians, and we start living a cardinal life, what you think God's going to do? If we start trying to walk in evil instead of walking in God's grace, what you think God's going to do? Yes. There is consequences to disobedience. I, I love this saying. I love this saying. It says, uh, uh, you are free to choose, but you are not free from the consequences of your choices. Yes. The consequences of your choices either inflict pain, sorrow, and sadness, or it urges in joy, prosperity, freedom. Oh, hallelujah. Are, are, are we ready to make the right choices? Are, are we really trying to make the right choices? That That's the question. Or are we making decisions, making choices that have devastating consequences? Mm, mm, mm. So let's go down to the background of this lesson. Uh, well, I, I ain't told you my aims and all that. Let me Let me do that. Key concept, God will punish us for sin if we do not repent. That's a key concept, plain and simple. For children, this is the lesson. God wants his people to trust in him and obey his word. Two, God wants his people to choose what is right. And three, if we do not choose what is right, God will punish us. God will punish us. It's that simple. It's that simple. And and here's the thing, and I and I gotta come always back to this. It ain't that God is just gonna whoop your tail. In the long run he will, but but oftentimes God will just let you deal with your consequences. And sometimes your consequences whoop you or no. Let me break this thing down. If you decide to be an alcoholic, there's consequences to that choice. You keep drinking. After a while, you're going to get drunk and you're going to pass out and you ain't going to remember nothing. You keep drinking. After a while, after a few years, your, 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 your liver and your kidneys are going to cause you problems. You're going to have health problems. That's the consequences of what you've done. That's just the consequences. And when you have those kind of consequences, you can't blame them on God. That was your choice. But then there's other times. And in particular times that, that, that we're going to deal with here in this lesson is if God says, come to me, turn from your wicked ways, 
and accept my son as your Lord and Savior, and you say no, that choice, that consequence is going to cause you great eternal damage. Yes, that consequence is going to cause you big problems because when God brings the evidence to you and says, I told you about Jesus Christ. I had that that old young, that old fellow from Huntsville and Harvest, Alabama, come tell you about God, and, and you refuse to accept my son as your Lord and Savior. You refuse to accept it. So now it's judgment day. And when I look, your name ain't written on the Lamb Book of Life. It's not covered in the grace and the blood of Jesus Christ. So you don't get to go to heaven. You don't get to enjoy everlasting, eternal life because you made a choice. You made a decision. And the consequences of it is that you would be punished for all eternity. Yep, it was your choice. It's your decision. You have to make up your mind. And here's the other thing. Not choosing God, not choosing Jesus Christ is also a choice. You can't be playing the fence thinking that, well, I dabble a little bit over here and I dabble a little bit over that. No, 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 no. You got to go all the way. Oh, so let me go deeper in the lesson. I'm just, I'm just, this stuff is just rolling in my head. And I'm just sharing it with you. Uh, today's lesson, we're going to deal with some facts. We're going to identify the objects, of, the objects of the Lord's condemnation and the reason for it. And we're going to, to the biblical principle we want to get out of this is to explain why the topic of God's judgment is as relevant today as it was in Zephaniah's audience. I think I kind of already did that. And then the uh, daily application, we're going to tell how the theme of God's judgment will influence us uh, in our daily lives. So we're going we're gonna to talk about all of that in, in, in a sense. And some of it, like I said, I've already mentioned and lifted up. Uh, the outline, we're going to deal with uh, our, our other nations are destroyed, and and that's uh, – the outline is kind of weird. I'm, I, it's dealing with verse 6. It's, it's, it's dealing with the fact that, you know, once we talk about all that stuff that happened in verse 1 and 5, we're going to deal with that destruction. Then we're going to deal with uh, Judah's refusal to repent. That's verse 7. And then we're going to deal with verse 8. The Lord promised other destruction and then offers hope. Words that we need to understand in this lesson. Judge is meaning to make a decision. A pollute is to, 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 to uh, make something unclean. A uh, prophet is a, a messenger of God. Punishment is discipline or correcting a bad behavior. And then repent is to be sorry for our sins and to turn from sin to God. So those are the words that, 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 that we just want to define and, and lay out here. So now let me go down to the background. and uh, I've taken quite a little bit of time introducing the lesson and just talking about it in general. But I, I think that, that gives us, that lets us capture what's really going on in the lesson, what I've uh, uh, spoken thus far. So, so in, this, in this text, in this text, Zephaniah the prophet, he, he is one of the, the last of the 12 minor prophets, and, and he's not minor in the sense of what he said, but he's minor in the, in the full uh, sense of the uh, word because uh, the other prophets had big, long books, whereas Zephaniah's book and all the other 12 minor prophets are, were, were small books of the Bible. They wrote for a particular time, for a particular season. And then that which they said that was going to happen then also has a prophetic word for us for the end times. So he talks about his immediate times, but he also talks about the future times. So when we, we look at, at Zephaniah in particular, we're going to talk about what happened in his day, but we also got to look at this from the far off reaching last days in which I believe we are presently living in. And so, so that that's what this is all about. And 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 in his time, in his time when when Zephaniah was around, uh, a transformation of the of, of 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 Judah had happened. Remember the fact that Israel and Judah separated, 
uh, uh, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And, and, and now Israel is already gone. They already been in, put in captivity. Now we're getting ready to go into captivity for Judah. Also in the midst of this, in the midst of this was uh, uh, King uh, uh, Josiah. And King Josiah, he, he tried to reform the, 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 the kingdom of Judah. He tried to get that southern kingdom to understand that, that the law of God is what we ought to be following. But, but the people had gotten so arrogant and gotten so rebellious and prideful that they didn't want to turn towards God. They wanted to play both sides of the fence. They had all these other gods, and, and they were worshiping them. And, and God, God a jealous God, so he don't play that. And, and when you start worshiping other things, other idols, other people, other stuff, other than God, then what happens is it becomes easier and easier and easier and easier to do. So, 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 you know, you give, you give the devil an inch and he's going to take a mile. And that's, 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 that's the whole thing that had happened to him. And now God was at his wit's end. He says, no, I, I, I'm going to tell y'all, I want y'all to repent. I'm sending this prophet to tell you to repent. But if you don't repent, I'm, I got to do what I do. I, I got to, I, I, my righteousness has to come forth. My judgment and my justice have to show itself because, yes, I am a holy God. And a holy God cannot continue to just let unholiness, unrighteousness, evil go unchecked. He has to step in because he's a holy and mighty and awesome God. And so, so that's, that's, that's where the background of all of this is. And, and so now, now we're in this, this chapter, this chapter 3. And so I'm going to read verses 1 through 5 through, through, through from, the, from the Message Bible. He says, doom to the rebellious city. That's Jerusalem, the home of oppressors. Sewer city. Mercy God. They <laughs> message Bible called Jerusalem a sewer city. The city that wouldn't take advice, wouldn't accept correction, wouldn't trust God, wouldn't even get close to their own God. Her very own leaders are uh, 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 are like rapi, rapious, capricious. That's what I really wanted to say. I think it should be capricious, capricious lion. Her judges are capricious, trembling wolves who every morning prowl for fresh kill. Her 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 prophets are are out for what they can get. Oh, have mercy! They're opportunists. You can't trust them. Her priests desecrate the sanctuary. They use God's law as a weapon to maim and to kill souls. Yet God remains righteous in her midst, untouched by the evil. He stays he stay at it day after day, melting out justice. At evening, he's still at it, strong as ever. But evil men and women, without conscience, without shame, persist in evil. The city is in a bad situation. Jerusalem has just been went wild. We call it buck wild. Jerusalem, the city of God, the city of David, has turned into Las Vegas. It just been went plumb evil, just doing whatever they want to do, when they want to do it, as if they were at Burger King. And God is in the midst of her. God is in the temple. God is doing his job. He, he's, he's telling them to repent. He's, he's blessing them in spite of themselves, showing them that he's the all-powerful, almighty God, all-knowing God. He's, he's dealing out mercy and he's dealing out grace. He's showing his love. And all of that is holiness to come through also. And so, he says, this city is doomed. It's a sewer city. Rebellious and polluted. And they won't even take advice. They won't even hear the prophets. They won't hear the word of God. They won't read the word of God. They, they don't even want to be corrected. 
I, I like this illustration. If you ever seen a cat, if you ever seen a cat uh, go get into some mud or some water or something like that, a cat will, will sit there and try to wipe that stuff off of them and clean themselves. Cats are always pruning and kind of cleaning themselves. And and, 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 and and I believe we as Christians ought to be like cats. We that, that know the Lord, we, we should, you know, yeah, we might fall, but we should get back up, and we should try to clean ourselves off by repenting and turning towards God. But what, what God is saying right now, the city, the city of Jerusalem and all of its people, they are like pigs. You know what pigs do. When pigs see a mud hole, Pigs get in the mud and they just wallow in it. And that's what that's 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 right where these people were. And it seems like that's where we are in many cases in these last times. People are just wallowing in their sin. They know they got dirt on them and it's like it's okay, this dirt feel good. This mud is cool. Oh, I love this mud. I'm just gonna waddle in it. Oh have mercy, God. Oh have mercy. And that's where they were. They, they wouldn't take correction. They wouldn't take advice. They didn't want to trust God, but they wanted to waddle in their sin. And it was so bad that the leaders themselves, for the main ones leading the parade to the mud hole. And not only was the leaders leading the pigs and hogs to the parade of the mud hole where they could waddle, the judges were just as bad. They 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 were like wolves. And you know we we're in that kind of time right now. Here we have a judge in California who who know this boy raped that girl. Had two other witnesses that 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 helped the girl escape and captured the boy. That's that's three eyewitnesses. DNA. And yet, this boy gets less than six months in jail for raping this woman? Oh, have mercy. That's just evil. But it's going to come out. God God going to show what's going on. But not only are the leaders and the, and the judges evil. But have mercy, God. Mm. The prophets and the priests are doing the same thing. Everybody trying to get their own. It says that the prophets are 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 are, 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 are just opportunists trying to make a buck. And you might say, Well, how how do you how do you get it? How, how does the prophet get into that situation? How does the prophet get to the point where, where they're no longer following what God wants them to do, but they're trying to, to be opportunists? Well, it, it's a competition issue. People get caught up with building the big sanctuaries. People get caught up with their name recognition, their books being sold, their records being sold. They get into the competition of making the money, and they're, they're qualifying themselves by saying, I'm great because I got a big sanctuary. I'm great because I just sold all these books. I'm great because my recordings are being heard. No, it's not a competition. Don't get caught up in that. We are here to serve the Lord and to spread his word. Even if nobody knows our name, even if our bank account is empty, it does not matter because we're not storing up rewards here on earth. We're storing up rewards up in heaven. Somebody ought to say, preach, preacher, hallelujah, because we know that our reward is in heaven. I want to hear the God say when I, when I leave this earth, oh, my good and faithful servant, you are faithful over a few things. Come on up a little higher, and I'll make you ruler over many. Excuse me, y'all. I'm supposed to be teaching this thing, but it's just on me as a preach today. Hallelujah. It talks about priests desecrating the sanctuary. You go in the church, ain't nothing saint, sanctified no more. Ain't nothing sacred no more. 
Oh, mercy. Nothing. And it's because the priest is not praying and sanctifying the place, anointing the place with all, making sure that people understand how holy God is. And how he desires us to also be holy. Oh, hallelujah. He says, they use God's law as a weapon to maim and kill souls. They control freaks, insecure. They're not real leaders. They've beaten the sheep. Maiming the sheep and taking profits from the sheep. The people who were really earnestly wanting to have an awesome relationship with God are left out there with nothing. That's how these people were doing. And many in the church are doing that same thing today. That's why when we read this prophet, we can see what happened in his day. But we can also see how some of that same stuff is going on on our day. But in all of this, God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Our God is a never-changing God. He was holy before we, he even created us, and he's going to be holy even when he has to destroy those who don't want to follow him. Thank God that we serve a holy God. Thank God that we serve a merciful and gracious and loving God. Thank God! I could hear the prophet Isaiah saying in the sixth chapter, as he wrote about them being in the sanctuary and seeing the Lord praying fill the temple. Heard the sheriff and Holland, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. When you come into the presence of a holy God, you have to be like Isaiah and say, oh Lord, I'm a man of unclean lips. Living in the midst of an unclean people. Oh Lord, I, I'm undone myself. But don't get me wrong as I'm talking about this stuff. I feel like Isaiah. Oh Lord, help me, Lord. But I can also hear that call that Isaiah received, that he overheard, that he tuned into. Who, who will go for us? Who will tell this dying world what the problem is? Who will tell this dying world what the solution is? I can say like Isaiah, hear my Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hear my God. Mm. Send me. Send me. Oh, hallelujah. Will you say that? Oh, I see how bad it is. I see the problem, but I know you're the solution, Lord. Send me. That clarion call is still going out today. Who will go? We have to say, Lord, send me. Send me. So that the doom and the gloom. Problem, the problem was going on. This time in Zephaniah's day, as well as in our day. And God is still the solution to the problems. But if those that don't want to accept his solution, he has a remedy also. And that's our next point, how he's going to remedy this situation. Cause great destruction. Listen to verse 6. So I cut off the godless nations. 
I knocked down their defense poles, filled her road with rubble, so no one could get through. Her cities were bombed out ruins, unlivable, unlived in. God is saying, I'm, I'm going to destroy everything. And you think you're going to get help from some other nations? I'm going to destroy them also. You're not going to turn towards me. You're going to turn towards somebody else for help? And I didn't gave you the solution? And the solution is real simple. Repent and turn from your wicked ways and turn towards God. But yet, you're going to go try to find help from other nations? I'm going to destroy them too. They ain't going to be able to come help you. Previously, when, 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 when Judah had, was in trouble, they, they went and, 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 and teamed up with Egypt. That, that's when, when the Assyrians were in power. Now, now we got a situation where the Babylonians have taken over and Nebuchadnezzar is in power. They ain't got nowhere else to turn because Nebuchadnezzar, when he came through, he took out everybody. Nebuchadnezzar had no idea that he was being used as an instrument of God because God can use bad people to do good things. And it's crazy. I don't understand it, God. But he says, no, I've got to execute my wrath. And that's what he had Nebuchadnezzar doing, getting ready to take his, I mean, take Judah out because they refused to repent. Use to turn from their wicked ways. And that's our next point in verse 7. Judah refuses to repent. Message Bible reads, I thought, surely, she honor me now. Accept my discipline and my correction. Find a way of escape from the trouble she's in. Find relief from the punishment I'm bringing. But it did not faze her. Right? And early, she was up at it again, doing the same old thing. God is saying, look, I, 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 I'm showing you that, that, that Nebuchadnezzar is destroying everything around you. You ain't got nobody to turn to. I'm showing you that punishment is coming your way, and I, and I can stay the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. I got the power to control the situation, but yet, Judah. Yet, Jerusalem, you see all of this, and you think that I'm going to still save you in your sin and in your evil. You better repent and turn from your wicked way. But no, you get up the next morning doing the exact same thing. I remember back in the day, especially when I was in college, and I tried to be a heavy drinker. And, uh, and uh, one, 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 <laughs> one, one Friday, we, we were celebrating and fraternity brothers, and we, we were drinking, and we were drinking this stuff called, we call it Bumpy Face. Uh, if y'all don't know what Bumpy Face is, that's Seagram's Gin. And we was drinking Seagram's Gin, and we had a, a whole big, half a, a gallon bottle of Seagram's gin. We drinking it straight out the bottle. And, boy, we was drinking that stuff. And after a while, I don't even know if we ever ate that day. It looked like I got into a fight with Muhammad Ali. And he had knocked me silly. And I was, oh, I was just curling all over the place. Blah, blah, blah. And I said, Lord, Lord, please, Lord, please, Lord, if you get me out of this, if you get me out of this, God, I, I never drink again. I'm over the porcelain throne, throwing up and just praying, Lord, I never drink again. Next thing I know, I passed out. They took me on home, went to bed. Next morning, little frat brother. Lil' D showed up with some fried chicken and some old English 800. I drunk and ate that chicken. <laughs> I said, Lord, have mercy. That's, that's how we are. We, we make porcelain wrong promises. 
that we're going to change. Yet, get up the next morning and do the same thing. That's just rebellious. Just being straight up rebellious. That's how the children of Israel were, children of Judah at this time. God was just shaking his head. I've shown him mercy. I've shown him my grace. I've shown him my love. But yet, he won't repent. I gave them the solution to their problem. But yet, they will not turn from their wicked way. So God had to make a decree. The Lord had to punish them and utterly destroy them. That's our next point. And even in the midst of his destruction, he gives an offer of hope. Listen to the Message Bible again, verse eight. Well, if that's what you stick, that's what you want. Stick around. God's decree. The day, your day in court. Your day in court. Your day in court. Is coming. Your day in court is coming. But remember, I'll be there to bring the evidence. I'll bring all the nations to the courtroom, round up all the kingdom, and let them feel the burnt of my anger, or the brunt, excuse me, of my anger. My rage and wrath, my zeal is a fire that will purge and purify the earth. Listen to the King James, New King James. Therefore, wait for me, says the Lord, until the day I rise up for plunder. My determination is to gather the nations to my assembly of kingdoms and to pour on them my indignation, all my fierce anger, all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Have mercy, God. God is saying to the children of of Judah, look, I'm coming, and I'm going to tell you all apart. I'm going to destroy everything. And I got evidence for my judgment. I got evidence to show you my justice. I can show you all of the decisions you made. I can show you how you made evil, disobedient decision. It was your choice. I gave you a way of escape. I didn't let no temptation come on you that you couldn't get out of, that I wouldn't provide a way of escape, but yet you would not accept it. Now you have to pay the consequence. So I'm going all the way back to where I started. You have the you are free to choose, but you're not free from the consequences of your choice. We're not free from the consequences of our choice. We will suffer if we're disobedient. But we will be blessed if we follow what the word of God says. Consequences of our choice can either afflict pain and sadness and sorrow. Or I can usher in joy, prosperity, and freedom. Choose wisely. Choose God. Choose to repent. Choose to turn from your wicked way. God contrasts all of this horror. With his holiness. He's a holy God. He's a just God. And we ought to love him, cherish him, obey him, because he's just that kind of God that deserves our love, our obedience. In conclusion, we really don't know the day nor the hour of God's judgment. But that day is indeed coming. But if we trust in Jesus Christ, 
for the forgiveness of our sins. We don't have to worry about that day. Because of the promise of that day, we should be committed to keeping and obeying God's word every day. We should say and stay prepared that day. Then we should go out and help others get ready to. Let us pray. Please, dear Heavenly Father, forgive us of our sins. Thank you, God, for loving us enough to give us a chance to change our way. Help us, God, turn from our sins and turn towards you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Before we end this recording, I always like to give those that are listening now and those that are going to be listening in the future the opportunity to give your life to Jesus. We pray the prayer of salvation. Let us pray. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sin. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen and amen.